First of all, uh, let me say that it was very inspiring uh, for me to join this year's uh, City Lab. Actually, my team and I had uh, the opportunity to benefit from many of the great ideas uh, and experiences shared in the last two days. So thank you very much, uh, all your team. And uh, back to your question, uh, uh, our Pay It Forward plat platform uh, embodies uh, the essence of our solidarity municip municip municipalism, which is about citizens helping citizens, citizens helping citizens. Uh, launched during the first year of the pandemic, uh, the platform began when 25% of Istanbul households applied for social aid uh, because they could no longer pay their utility bills. Uh, the city tripled uh, its social assistance budget, but still was not able to meet the demand. Uh, so we turned to an ancient custom uh, and helped people to help each other. Uh, the municipality used the resources to identify uh, those in need. Uh, verifying families with less than $100 uh, dollars income. Uh, they uploaded their utility bills on the platform, uh, and donors covered those bills. Uh, but donors and recipients remained anonymous. Uh, donations went straight uh, to the recipients' bills, ensuring 100% transparency. This peer-to-peer -peer act of solidarity is simple and impactful. It mirrors an old Anatolian tradition, which is called bread on the hook, uh, where people paid uh, for an extra loaf for the next person in need. Mm -hmm. This system, so the platform's flexibility has exceeded our expectations. It has evolved to include cash support vulnerable groups such as mothers, uh, students, and uh, victims of the unfortunately earthquakes. As of today, uh, over 440,000 bills have been paid. 440,000 bills. And over 250,000 beneficiaries have received support packages, and uh, almost $15 million have flowed through this system. <laughs> and uh, both donations and pending requests are visible online for full transparency. What's more, 35 uh, cities, for example, in Turkey, eh, have adopted this model. And uh, we are proud that Pay It Forward uh, was selected as one of the winners of the Global Mayor's Challenge. Thank you, Bloomberg. <laughs> and uh, we are now reaching out to cities around the world to see how others can implement Pay It Forward under the Bloomberg's Idea Exchange Program. Uh, to come to the uh, second uh, part of your question, what does uh, it achieve? I believe this project is critical for two reasons. First, it addresses uh, rising urban poverty with a flexible model that adapts to evolving needs. And second, it rebuilds the social bonds that authoritarian populism seeks to weaken. We started in times of crisis, but what emerged is a powerful community spirit that defies divisions of ideology, religion, or gender. In Istanbul, we have uh, proven that a city administration can build an empathy bridge uh, when it's needed most. This is our project. <clears throat> uh, 
the building of that empathic bridge is absolutely the reason that it was selected to be a part of the Bloomberg Cities Idea Exchange. This is an idea that has uh, currency and interest in cities all over the place. We're, we're thrilled to continue to promote it. So you've, you've mentioned solidarity governance, and that's a part of the Istanbul model. Yes. Um, what is solidarity governance? What is the Istanbul model, and how does that model guide your actions and your priorities as mayor? Uh, Istanbul, uh, the Istanbul model is driven by three core pillars. Uh, sol uh, solidarity, uh, as I uh, mentioned, development and welfare. Uh, these principles guide uh, every policy uh, we implement uh, the first pillar is solidarity uh, uh, through Istanbul model, the city administration and its 32 municipal subsidiaries prioritize residents' needs. This is our first uh, principle. Uh, this approach uh, builds a creative, just and uh, green city uh, while tackling, uh, while tackling complex challenges uh, like migration, for example, and poverty and inequality, solidarity principle also means facilitation of citizen platforms, such as Pay It Forward, uh, which I already explained. Uh, the second pillar of model is development. Uh, the, uh, our focus is inequitable and smart urbanization, and uh, we have made significant investment in extending metro lines and improving bus and sea routes, uh, bringing mobility to underserved uh, areas. So we are also expanding green spaces, spaces, ensuring that everyone has access to nature. We have already opened 13 million square meters of green sp uh, space, including six city forests. We have created 22 new uh, public squares which are symbols of freedom, uh, of expression, and association for cities. The third pillar of Istanbul is welfare, uh, very important. And uh, our policies ensure that all residents benefit from urban life, whether through enhanced uh, public transport, access to cultural facilities, uh, or opportunities for women and youth. Uh, mothers, for example, this is a very special uh, project uh, for us. Mothers with children younger than four can use public transport free of charge. Free of charge. And uh, nearly, nearly 700,000 mothers have made 160 million trips to take their children to school. Wow. Uh, or to one of the 104 nurseries opened since we took office in uh, 2019. We have uh, another one, we have provided uh, scholarship for university students to nearly 300,000 students uh, in the last four years. And we will provide uh, this year new scholarships uh, to 100,000 more students uh, for this period. <laughs> Through these policies and practices, uh, our priority is to address extreme poverty during the times uh, of economic hardships. At the same time, for the future, we also have additional programs to support young uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, or, and one final cross-cutting aspect of, of our approach is Citizen uh, participation in decision making uh, is another uh, very important, uh, uh, I mean, uh, politics for us. This is the best shown by our Budget is Yours uh, initiative, where we prepare a part of Istanbul's budgets together with its citizens <laughs> to increase citizens' participation in e-government and decision-making, we also created a super app, uh, which we call Istanbul is Yours. Uh, this is a new app. Uh, so 
to, to, uh, with, with one username and password, users can have access to over 90 apps inside it. And uh, so far, 5.2 million in two years, uh, 5.2 million users downloaded this app, and uh, where they can also share their opinions on decisions affecting their lives. Uh, these wide consultations uh, enable to us to feel uh, the pulse of society, understand their expectations, and respond to them. In summary, Istanbul model guides us in building an inclusive, people-centered city where no one is left behind. It's an amazing, it's an amazing vision. And, and the citizen participation point is one that really uh, caught my attention when I was in Istanbul. I think we have a few photographs to show. There's a great story. Before this mayor took office, the mayoral residence was a walled off place, a large set of gardens, a large set of buildings, private swimming pool, only available to the mayor. This mayor tore down those walls, um, opened the place up, turned it into the city planning department. And what I love the most is he drained the swimming pool. <laughs> and he drained the swimming pool and called it the, swimming, the pool of ideas. And the pool of ideas is a place that the city planning department brings in residents for brainstorming sessions and policy-making sessions, all going back to this idea that the mayor just spoke about around solidarity and participation. It was so inspiring. So, Mayor, in a world where democracy and world peace are threatened, um, how do you see the role of city leadership? What is the role of city leaders uh, at this time? There's the pool. Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, that is the pool. <laughs> yes. Uh, change is very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Authoritarian uh, politicians, politicians today uh, follow a well-known playbook. They exploit social divisions, undermine democratic institutions, and silence dissent. Uh, this doesn't just happen uh, within national borders. They create, and at the same time, external enemies uh, and fuel conflict abroad to solidify their control on power. The challenges Istanbul faces today are not simply due to uh, the growing authoritarianism uh, at home, but uh, unfortunately in the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The Syrian civil war has displaced 12 million people and many of them have sought refuge in Turkey. Wars in, in Ukraine and the, in the Middle East are contributing to more humanitarian uh, crisis with millions displayed in the region. And now 2.5 million refugees only in Istanbul. Istanbul is once more at the front line as Syrians, uh, Ukrainians, and others look at for refuge. Uh, this challenge is too great uh, for Istanbul and Turkey to face alone. The cities are affected uh, directly by the migration and refugee crisis. However, uh, the, their role in shaping global policies is very limited. So the mayors should collaborate more to impact decision-making process. If we believe human rights and justice, we must react to humanitarian tragedies with the same degree of determination regardless of where they emerge. Unfortunately, this is not always the, uh, the case. And that uh, is why liberal democracy is losing uh, ground and why so many people feel that the global system is failing them. The founder of my uh, political party and the founder of uh, Turkish Republic, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, warned the, the national leaders uh, that 
unless a nation's life faces peril, war is a murder. Unless a nation's faces peril, war is a murder. It's very important. In a world, in a world where the, uh, we have to uh, understand that his famous dictum, uh, peace at home, peace in the world, is still a guiding principle for me. In a world where democracy and global peace are threatened, uh, the city leaders must raise their voice and take initiatives for peace and cooperation. And uh, this is exactly what we are doing in Istanbul and beyond. Uh, we have started a regional uh, city network in the Balkans uh, with uh, 23 city cities in 2021. B40, the name is B40. B40 as we call it, is now a platform for collaboration among 65 cities uh, of all Balkans. Some of them are represented now uh, here in this room. Uh, this December, for example, not only for Balkans, this December we will uh, convene in Istanbul the mayors uh, of the major cities of the Middle East and North Africa and to discuss how we can address the sources to conflict and build a better future uh, for all based on peace and cooperation. Uh, we also plan uh, to take an uh, initiative uh, among the cities of uh, Black Sea Coast also. So uh, we know that Istanbul is very important in, uh, in our region. So in all these initiatives, we share our experience on how we deal with authoritarian populism at home through the Istanbul model, which I already described. This is, this is how I believe city leaders can make critical difference to defend peace and democracy, because without peace, mayors, there is no democracy. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Our last question, and then we will wrap up. I, you just won a resounding election, um, re-election. Uh, congratulations on that. We're sitting in a room filled with mayors and city innovators. Um, what is your advice um, for those in the room, many of whom are also concerned and focused on democracy and strengthening participation? And uh, to address the global crisis of uh, democracy, we must go beyond uh, the traditional approaches of liberal and social democracies. We need a new vision, Jim. We need a new vision and uh, fresh language and innovative leadership uh, that truly places people at the center of politics. I call this approach uh, democratic peopleism. <laughs> peopleism. Democratic peopleism. A redefinition of populism which has earned a bad reputation uh, but can be turned on its head. Instead of division and inequality, this form of leadership emphasizes inclusion, fairness, and respect for all groups. Uh, authoritarian populists grow by exploiting social divisions and inequality. Our response must be built systems that promote justice, mm -hmm. systems where vulnerable groups are respected and recognized, and resources and opportunities and redistributed fairly. That's why I embrace uh, the motto of the three R's, respect, recognize, and redistribute. Mm -hmm. By focusing on solidarity, development, and welfare, we can create cities and eventually societies where democracy not only survives by tribes. I believe that this century 
will be the century of cities. Did that means the century of mayors? <laughs> cities are the best places where we will find solutions to the most urgent global problems. Cities are the best places where we will defend and reinforce democracy. And we, the mayors, have to take this responsibility and be the drivers of change. Change is very good for a better tomorrow at home and abroad. This is exactly why I came to join you here today. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. What an excellent note to end on. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. All right, everyone. That brings us. Kanalımıza destek olmak için lütfen abone olun.